What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Howard the Horse Barbecue and today we're cooking up some dry aged beef ribs and not just any ribs. These are some dino ribs. Let's get it. Harry the Horse Barbecue. I am so excited because today we're cooking up dino ribs from Porter Road. This is some dry aged beef and I have never had dry aged beef before. And what better cut to start with than the beef rib. Dino ribs are traditionally part of the ribs of a cow, but they're part of like the plate rib section where the bones are longer and they've got a bit more meat on them. I am super stoked for these Porter Road dry aged beef ribs. Let's get these out of the pack so we can get them on the cooker, cooked up so we can try these bad boys. Let's get it. Beef ribs, they're a super easy cook as long as you treat them right. These are from Porter Road. I'm super excited. Now I've cooked beef ribs from all over the place. I've gotten them from local butchers. I've gotten them from Creekstone Farms. Anywhere you can think of, I've tried them, except for Porter Road. Can you just see the marbling in the pack? It's looking good. I didn't put a garbage in my garbage can. What was I thinking, man? Those are massive. These are some giant dino ribs. The only two things I'm gonna to do to these dino ribs before I season is one, take this flat muscle piece off the top. I've done this on so many occasions where I don't wanna waste the meat, where I leave this piece on and it ends up just sliding off and leaving me with barkless beef ribs and nobody wants that. There we go. All we gotta do is round off the corners. Shout out my guy Jerby Barbecue for this solid tip here. And I know what you're thinking, Mr. Horse, isn't that a lot of fat on your beef rib? Guess what? Horses like fat. You really want that fat. You want that fat to render. There is nothing better than when you got the crispy, fatty crunch of that bark mixed with the juicy interior. Oh man, nothing like it on beef ribs. Plus, we're gonna be foil boating these. If we're foil boating them, then we're gonna leave that fat exposed, allowing it time to get nice and crispy, crunchy, and barky. Man, these are gonna be good. Now I'm also just rounding off the edges a little bit too, in addition to the corners. Now I took off a little bit of the fat while I was rounding out the edges, but I'm gonna let these rock and be nice and fatty because I'm feeling fat today. Three things that we're gonna use. One, Q-glue is a binder, pretty much a staple on this channel. Some good old chud rub. Honestly, I don't feel like making a rub today and this is a solid rub. And of course, to help build bark, the official 16 mesh Chud's barbecue black pepper. That's what we're hitting these ribs with today. Super simple, super easy. You can hit these with whatever you want. Some SPG is great. Add a little paprika in there for color. You could do straight salt and pepper, whatever your heart desires, but this is what we're rocking with today. All right, cue glue down. Now we will forget the back. We will not be seasoning the back. I do leave the membrane on. We do not want to take that membrane off because it's holding the ribs together at the end of the day. Next, our 16 mesh black pepper. We've got a good amount of pepper down. Now over the top with our chug rub. These beef ribs are all seasoned up and ready for the cooker. But first, let's go fire up the cooker. Damn it. Chud chimney fits right in my firebox. Not bad. Now I got some janky old pieces of wood. I'm just gonna get the fire hot and then we'll get these ribs on. All right, let's get it lit. This fire is lit. Let's close up the cooker. All right, y'all, this cooker's up to about 250 degrees. Let's go grab those beef ribs. These beef ribs are looking killer. I need to eat these ASAP. Let's get them on. Up and under, we got a water pan in, kind of as a heat deflector. And I'm gonna put the big side of the ribs towards the fire. And that's it, no other surprises today, just a rack of dry aged beef ribs. Let's close it up. Maintain temps between 250 and 275, and we'll catch y'all back here when we spritz in about three, four hours. 
Close her down. Boom shakalaka. All right, y'all, about three hours in on these beef ribs and it's only about 4.30 and it's getting very dark. So this will be our last check-in before we actually wrap these up. But let's check out how these beef ribs are doing. I'm psyched about these. Let's take a look. Ooh, oh, I forgot I had my beef rib junior on here. Let's take a quick look. Oh yeah. This pullback on the bone is looking really nice. That's because I think the heat from the wall is actually playing a role here. So what I'm actually gonna do is probably rotate this because this part's shrinking up a little bit more than I want it to. Just get a little spritz on there on the front end, back end, this beef rib junior. It's gonna be a nice little snack. I can't wait to snack on that. And I'm gonna bare hand flip these. One, two, ready, go. Oh, it's actually not that hot. And we're gonna rock this out. This rack of beef ribs is looking great at the three hour mark, but we do want to build some more bark. We're still gonna be looking for some more pullback on the bones, a darker bark, that fat to render, and also for that meat to be hitting around 180 internal or so before I actually wrap these up in a little foil boat. The foil boat will allow us to continue to render that fat, making it crispy, while also speeding up the cook a little bit to finish these guys out. But until then, let's keep rocking at about 250 to 275, somewhere in that range. And I'm gonna check on these about every hour for a little spritz. It might need it. It might not. We'll bring you back for a foil boat. Let the fire pop. Close this down. We're out of here. We'll meet y'all back. Boom. And eight hours later, these ribs are coming off the pit. Ooh, buddy. They are looking so good. Just take a look at those. Oh, yeah, that bark really developed. Can you hear the crispiness? Mm, these are gonna be so good. These are temping at around 195. They're feeling like butter. Bah. Right at 194 here. These are looking great. Let's put them in a foil boat wrap and let them rest until we're ready to slice into them. We're gonna let these ribs rest on the counter for maybe about an hour, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna slice into them and we're gonna enjoy these. I am so excited. I love me some beef ribs. Oh man. And 10 hours later, we're ready to slice into these dino ribs. I have been waiting all day, man. I just wanna try some of these. Now remember, these are dry aged dino ribs from Porter Road. They looked killer to start. We created a nice crust. Ooh, ooh, hey. Juicy. Ooh, ooh, hey. Juicy. Here we go. We put them in a foil boat to rest and we rested them for about an hour. These were reading about 160 internal. Time to slice them up. Oh man. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Just take a looky-loo at that. Ooh, that is a beef rib. Oh, oh my gosh, can we see this? Oh man, that is looking so good. I am dying to take a bite of these. Let's get it. Oh man, where to bite first on these beef ribs? It's gotta be right there. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. The juice is crazy. Mmm. That's a good bite. Mmm. 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 I feel like I'm swimming in a pool of fat, but damn, it's worth it. Mmm, that is killer. Mmm, those crispy edges. Well worth the wait, I tell you what. Now, if you're in the market for some beef ribs, you gotta check out Porter Road. 
These are some killer dino ribs. The dry aged flavor is actually really nice. It's a little tangy, but still carries through with all that beefy flavor. The quality of this beef is just tremendous as well. You are getting nothing but the highest quality meat here. You saw the marbling, you could see the tenderness, you could see the bark, you could just see how great the quality of the meat is here. So shout out to Porter Road for making such quality, quality products. And if you really want to blow some friends and family members away and really impress some people, this is the way to do it. And this is enough to feed plenty of people. You can slide these right off the bone, keep them up into little burnt end pieces and serve them up. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for tuning into Harry the Horse Barbecue. I appreciate you checking out this video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you like this video and you like the content we're putting out. New rule around here, every time we get crispy bark, you gotta hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. You know you wanna do it. These beef ribs were so good, slap that like button. Comment down below with what you think I should be making next. Where do you get your beef ribs? What should I try next? And just one more thing, y'all. This one's going straight to the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. So good.